Hi, I'm Adrienne Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your menstrual health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are, I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I'm really excited about all of the guests I've had this season, and our upcoming guest is absolutely no exception. Join me in welcoming Jody Thomas to the show. Welcome, Jody. Thank you. I'm really delighted to be here. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I am an earthbound nature person. I've been very connected to Gaia's energy. And for me, Tantra, which I've studied for a very long time, is deeply connected with that energy. I actually lived in a tent between the jungle and the ocean in Costa Rica for 11 years. And that experience has very much informed like being in touch on a cellular level with like deep nature in that way has really informed all of the things that I do. And so I've been studying somatics, the body, for a very long time. And I have found spiritual awakening through the body. You know, a lot of people do like transcendence, like going up and out. Or the other option is that some people are like only about the body, like more of a hedonistic type of thing. I've chosen the third path. Like I love to connect the body and spirit. And for me, they're actually the same thing. It's just easier for our minds to talk about them in that way of, you know, connecting them or reconnecting them. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. That is a beautiful segue, too, because (laughs) I feel like our busy modern society, we are so disconnected from our body. Is that something that you see a lot in your practice? Yes. And I think another thing that a lot of people might not understand is that even if you feel like connected to one part of your body, you might not feel connected to other parts of your body and like certain parts of your body can easily get completely disconnected from the whole because you know we think like oh okay I have one body but like there's like the organ system and there's the nervous system and there's the skin and then like and then even within the organ system you know you have your reproductive organs and you have your digestive organs (laughs) so you know it's very easy to get disconnected from any one of those and for them to get disconnected between themselves, you know, because like for easy functioning to happen in the body, it's really helpful for everybody to be communicating. It's like, so I actually have a master's degree in environmental governance. And I joke that I never really did a whole lot with that in particular, but now I do inner governance, right? Like, because it's like, how do we get everybody to sit down at the table and like have a conversation and like hear like, okay, well, my digestive system is really saying like, I want to do this right now. But like this other part of me is saying, I really want to do this right now. And like, how do I create a governance between all of these parts of my being, you know, including the spirit as well? Oh, I love that. I mean, I see this in my clients all the time. And particularly when I'm talking about assigned at birth female bodies, A lot of times part of that disconnect or a really big part of that disconnect is our association with our reproductive system, with our womb space. And a lot of our cycle-related challenges come out of that disconnect Mm -hmm. in the fact that like the body's trying to carry us, the body meaning the rest of the collective is trying to carry us in one direction. and the seat of our identity and our creative energy 
is stifled. It's turned off. Mm. It's muted. We don't have a relationship with it for a lot of reasons. Sometimes it comes by way of trauma. And I apologize if that is triggering for anyone. A lot of us, there's a reason why the Me Too movement was so big. There's a lot of us that fall into that category, myself included. Sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it's social. How are we raised in our families around sex and our sexuality? And was there shame around that? Was there guilt around that? All of those kinds of things. And it causes this, this block. And we turn off <laughs> and disassociate, disconnect from this part of our body. And I work with women and through pelvic steaming, a lot of times they're like, oh, I don't think I've ever really sensed the energetic body that like lives below my belly button before. Mm -hmm. And that can even be unnerving for some people. So uh, two things that arise for me about that is so when we're talking about governance, coming back to the idea of governance, there are all of these elements that are moving us and pulling us in different levels. So one of the fundamental, like basic neurocellular patterns, the first one that existed like in matter existing was vibration. And then after that is magnetism. And so we have these natural attractions and repulsions that are happening all of the time in our life, like pulling us and pushing us. And, and you talk about, you know, governance of like, what was my family like? That's an element of who I am. What is the overall collective consciousness happening? What is happening in Uranus right now? Like, how is the moon moving? Like, all of these things are influencing like these magnetic attractions and repulsions in our life. And the other thing that that brings up for me is, so I studied Tantra for a very long time in a particular lineage, and they talked a lot about yin and yang feminine and yin and yang masculine, how like there's these seeds of each of them, and they associated those with a part of the body. So with the masculine, the yin masculine is associated with the testes, the yang masculine is associated with the penis. And actually, very interestingly, for the feminine side of things, the womb, the uterus, is actually both. It's the yin feminine and the yang feminine. And I think that that's like a really potent way to see what you're speaking about because the womb for a lot of women is a place of confusion and it's a place of chaos and it's a place of like, I don't really want to go there because I don't understand it. And like nobody in, you know, around me in this very hyper masculine culture, like has any like way to even like inform me about like what is happening in this part of my body and this representation of like a piece of my being on like all of these holistic levels. And so the reason that the uterus is considered yin and yang is that, and you know very well about this region right now because you're pregnant, but when in this place where you're at right now, your womb is in this very like coddling, nurturing, like holding of this new being that's being formed and like giving them all of the nourishment that they need to be formed. And very soon your uterus will decide like, okay, you're all done being formed. And all of a sudden there will be a shift in your uterus and you will go into labor and it will expulse. That is the young feminine, like the expulsion, the like okay, cut the head off like Kali, like right now this is happening. And if you don't want to listen to what I'm saying and all of these subtle messages I've been sending you, like I'm just going to kick you out. <laughs> Here's your eviction notice. It's time to go. It's so true though. And I love that you worded it that way too, because I think from like how we move through the world too, when we have this alchemical experience, let's say, that's happening in the womb space, we live in a world where women are being forced into more of that executive functioning, planning, executing kind of energy, mm -hmm. which is masculine. It is action oriented, just like that expulsion that you were just talking about. It's action oriented, right? And women's bodies are built to receive. I mean, we can look at it just in terms of how we anatomically function, but that yin energy, that feminine energy is to receive. 
And a lot of us don't even know how to ask for help anymore. Mm. So like even just that in terms of how we are moving through the world, we live in a culture where it is celebrated to be hyper independent, but women are socialized to raise children and be in community socially. So again, like that whole receiving, asking for help kind of energy is so much an innate part of our body. And, and I'd love to hear what you are seeing from your perspective, but I almost feel like that compensation that our culture has forced us into, where we have to take more of that active masculine energy role just to get through our day-to-day -day kinds of activities and planning and executing, and whether it's in a workplace, which is based off of a testosterone-driven 24-hour cycle, or we're doing it as stay-at-home moms that are focused on child rearing, there's still a lot more of the overall like executing and action-oriented taskless stuff that's being held in the minds and hearts and bodies of women, which it didn't always used to be that way. And we almost identify more with that yang energy side of things than the yin energy side of things because of the way that our culture has fostered it. Well, yes. And I have a couple of thoughts on that. So one is I think it's also really important for us to reflect on where that drive is coming from. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us are driven by a feeling of lack or disconnection. And that is like literally what motivates us to do like most of the things that we do in our life. So my path and the name of my business is Surrender in Motion. And that for me has become like a really fascinating fallback on because I was raised in a super hyper-masculine family, like super, super hyper-masculine. And rediscovering my ability to surrender and be with what is as it is instead of like constantly needing to seek for things to be different. Because I think a lot of times like what we're doing in that hyper-masculinity, right? The penis is the representation of the young masculine. It's like, I need this, I desire this, and I'm going to go get it. But like, what happens if I take just a step back and I say, do I really need that? Like, what would happen? Where would I move from? This is a really interesting question. If I'm not moving from a feeling of lack in my life, where would I move from? Like, where would my movements be emerging from? And like in the movement practices that I facilitate, I very much invite this dynamic of like, what if you, instead of like moving in the habitual patterns that you have, like take a step back, drop down, like really come into the cellular consciousness in your body and allow spontaneous movement to simply emerge, like to connect to this spring of divinity within you and let it emerge from that place even though your ego and your mind might be chattering like oh my God, i can't do that or i don't want to do that like what would happen if you actually sat in your maybe of like huh well maybe i can be present with this thing that's happening right now mm, i love that oh that ego mind <laughs> <It's> so loud <laughs> Sister speaks for me. I have to tell the ego to sit down and be quiet, quite honestly. If you've been listening to the show for a while, we've had a few episodes where we've talked about the inner critic and how loud that can be. And if you join us earlier this season, when I interviewed Angela Castrino and we talked about a woman's worth, and how women measure their worth over this action-oriented doing, and mm -hmm. we feel shame and guilt when we just are. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons I love the name of your business, Jody, because that surrender is so powerful and so hard for so many of us. Yeah. I mean, even when we don't feel well, the first thing we do is we pick up our phone and we try to Dr. Google that shit just to see what the heck is, <laughs> what is going on and what can I do about it, right? Like, that is exactly what you're talking about. Instead of surrendering and asking the body, like, 
did we do too much? Did I not rest enough? Do I really need to stop today when there's a whole laundry list of things that I would rather be doing or that I feel the need, right? Because my ego brain is telling me I'm being lazy. You know, that <laughs> That's a big one doing. <laughs> yes. There's so much around that, that laziness, <laughs> shame, that guilt, right? And we push ourselves beyond our physical limits. And if I've learned anything in my pregnancy, and I'm over halfway through at this point, it's that I have learned to listen to my body in a completely different way than I ever used to. I would push her a little further than she really wanted to go because there were things I wanted to do and I didn't want to let people down. And pregnancy has really forced me to be like, okay, girlfriend, you talk about this all the time. You really need to walk your talk. Mm -hmm. And while I've made huge strides in that department, even prior to getting pregnant, I can definitely say that's one of the biggest lessons that I have taken away from this year is needing to surrender and trust that my body knows what it's doing, that my body is telling me exactly what it is that I need to know in that moment. And if that means that I need to sit my butt down and nap all day, then that's what I need to do even mm -hmm. if it's inconvenient to what I had already planned for the day, if my body <laughs> is asking for it, then it needs to happen. I have two thoughts around that that come up for me. One is that it's a very subtle dance. And this is, this is the thing about authenticity versus like contrived or like not spontaneous knowing because I remember for a long time I actually spent years where I kind of used that as an excuse of like oh I'm really tired my body's saying I'm really tired I need to rest and so like I did that like a lot like way more than actually what my soul was desiring I was like using that as an excuse to like stay still and not actually fulfill like the passions like through the movements wow. so i think that that's part of attuning and really coming into the body is that noticing of like okay yes i'm really tired right now and yet this spring of divinity that is emerging from me is still inviting me to like move and do this other thing and like for me that's part of the stillness and having the capacity to listen to the messages that are actually emerging and starting to kind of like untangle and discern like okay like is this coming from an internal welling like that's a really for me actually i just came across this kind of discernment because i've been asking this question and i was aware that it was not a very precise question i've been asking this question for years of like how do i differentiate between whether this is like divine will or jody's ego will Oh, I like that. Well, so, but I realized I was like, this is not very precise language because like, I understand like there's this constant dance and feedback happening all the time between the center and the parts. And I finally come to the word center because center is everywhere. Center is everything. And so when I come back to my center, like, is this movement emerging? Is this impulse emerging from my center or is it? coming from like all of these external influences that are like pulling me in five million different directions. And that for me is how we know like this is authentic. Like this is the pleasure of being human. This is the bliss. Like people talk about bliss in spiritual communities. And I think sometimes it gets taken in different ways. But for me, the bliss or the pleasure is this authentic pleasure of like allowing this welling from within to come instead of following all of these other things that are pulling us in a million different directions externally. So do you think that's what keeps us from being able to experience authentic pleasure that we disassociate and we have a it's, hard time to navigate that? Yes, it's the dissociation. It's the trying to fix like noticing, like if I notice, for example, like my belly really hurts today, kind of like what you were mentioning earlier of like the tendency is to dissociate from that because it's like, oh, it hurts. I just want to fix it instead of 
like taking it, you know, if when we were children, all of our parents, like, you know, when we were crying or upset or hurt, if every time that that happened, we were just kind of like taken and coddled, it might have created very different sorts of ways of being in the world. And I've noticed this, there's a million different kinds of alternative therapies. I was a wellness center coordinator at a very well-known spa in Costa Rica for many years. And there I had the experience of a lot of different therapies, alternative therapies, and, you know, the medical model and even a lot of alternative therapies. Like the reason that people come to see someone is like, oh, I have this symptom. I want you to fix me. Like I want you as the therapist to fix me. And like they're coming from the place of like, I want to fix this. Like I have this symptom. I want to fix it. But on a more subtle level, like for me, symptoms are simply an invitation to pay attention. It's like for me, if like I feel like an emotion or a pain or like something arises in my awareness, it's like my little antennas, like my little grasshopper antennas go up and kind of like, huh, what is this informing me about? Like, you know, like look I around love that. And, and pay attention, like just draw your attention like, oh, this is trying to tell me something. Oh, I love this. So, so my audience is probably going, oh, we've heard Adrian talk about this before. But it's so true. Like our symptoms are our body's way of communicating with us because yeah. it's the only language that it has with which to share what's working well and what isn't. And how can I support you best? I started asking that question actually when I would get headaches a oh. few years ago. I haven't had headaches in a long time, but I used to get them pretty chronically and I would ask my body, so how am I not supporting you well? Or what is it that you are trying to show me? And mm -hmm. when I started framing the question that way, I actually started to feel the pain recede. It was almost like mm -hmm. it was wild when I first started doing it because I thought it sounded absolutely insane at first. And as I started doing it, it was almost like my body goes, oh, you're listening to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> this is what it is that I need from you, right? I love that. That's so beautiful. And now we interrupt this episode for another really great announcement. Are you interested in sound healing and wish to use it for self-care in the comfort of your own home? Join me for Rebalance, a sound healing course to help you create balance and equilibrium in your body. The pace of our lives is fast and it can leave us feeling unbalanced and out of sorts. Using the power of sound healing at home, give yourself a mini spa treatment and restore the balance that we all crave in our lives. Join me for the upcoming Rebalance class offered in person in Dover, New Hampshire and online through Zoom and learn how sound can relax and balance your stressed system and feel ready to take on another day. Details about the upcoming classes are available in the show notes. And now, back to the show. Well, and I think one of the issues here that's coming up for me that's drawing a couple of different strings of what we're speaking about together is a lot of people don't feel like they have the time or the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. Like there's this perception, and I absolutely had this for a very, very long time, this perception of like, well, how can I pay attention to all this? Like there's so many things going on. The good news is you don't have to pay attention to all of it. <laughs> that's the first piece. I mean, you know, our bodies are miraculous. And that's like part of the mystery is that our body has this amazing capacity to heal on its own. And when I am in this flow of authentic pleasure, the body is pretty much like self-maintaining. So I don't need to like, you know, attend to every single thing that's happening. That's one piece. And the other piece is drawing these things into relationship with each other and into relationship with your whole. And so the spirit matter connecting, like there's a piece there. Yeah. So when I notice that there is either a symptom or it becomes clear to me that there's like a black hole in some part of my body, like there's a part 
of my body that I really noticed that like I have no relationship with. Like all of a sudden, for example, I become aware like, oh, I didn't even know that I had a, like I hear somebody say pubic disc and it's like, oh, well, what's that? Like, I didn't even know I had a pubic disc. Like, where is that? And like, can I feel that? And like, allow your curiosity to inform like instead of coming from this place of like lack or fixing, like allow your curiosity to inform these things. Like you hear the word pubic disc and you go, huh, well, what's that? Like, let me see if maybe I can look it up in an anatomy book or like, you know, for me, touch is incredibly powerful. Like whether it's touch from another person or my own touch, like if you want to awaken a part of your body, like just bring your fingers or your whole hand to that part of the body and like it creates this dynamic of awakening that can happen just through your own touch. Oh, I love that. I started doing that with my hands over my heart, actually, when mm -hmm. I was trying to essentially disconnect that ego brain from like calling the shots for everything. For anyone who is into astrology, I'm an Aquarius, so <laughs> I tend to be very much in my head. And getting into an embodied place was very hard for me. Pelvic steaming was actually one of the first things that helped bring me out of my head and into my body in a really meaningful, grounded kind of way. Mm. And when I talk, and my clients have even noticed it now, like that I will, if I'm sharing something that's coming from an embodied knowing, I will put my hands, and I don't even think about it anymore, I'll put my hands over my heart. But I had to start doing that. I completely agree with you. For me, that touch was magical in terms of helping me to get into my body and be intentional to speak from that body wisdom place and not from that ego knowing brain superior kind of place. You may even start to notice that the tone of your voice shifts like I noticed that when you did that when you brought your hands to your heart right now I could feel the shift in the tone of your voice I can feel the shift too and mm. I enjoy speaking from that place and sometimes I have to physically make that contact in order to remind myself to slow down and be from that place instead of my headspace, which has always been the default response for me. Mm. And I see this a lot in my clients too. Like steaming is really powerful. Pelvic steaming is really powerful for a lot of them in terms of helping them awaken and have contact and a form of touch and stimulation that helps to bring them home in their body in a really beautiful way. Another thing that I just wanted to tap into is relating to this idea of fixing or needing things to be different. I love to just come back to the mystery, right? Like nobody really knows. Like even science doesn't know how our body works the way that it does. Our science doesn't know like you know, what is it that gives a baby, like when conception happens, like what is it that gives the baby like the template, like, okay, here, now this is what's going to happen next. And then you're going to form blood islands and then you're going to create a heart. And like, it's a mystery. And for me, it's really important to have like all of these complementary possibilities and try them out. Like one of the main principles in Tantra is everything is an experiment. And so try experiments in your body. And like, if you do notice some sort of symptom arising, like, I think it's really beautiful to have like a community of practitioners. And so like, you can go and you can try pelvic steaming or you can go and like, you know, I do something called stillness touch. And for me, that's really just dropping fully into the mystery and holding space for anything that wants to arise. And then I also do conscious intimacy alchemy, which is a little bit more of a, okay, let's consciously like talk about and go into and like in the body, explore some ways that your body and your mind are disconnected because people can talk amazingly about intimacy and like amazingly about pleasure and amazingly about authentic pleasure even. But as soon as I like 
touch them, you know, even if I just like touch their foot or something, it can like spark all of these things because we need to practice this in our body too. And this is why for me, the connection between spirit and matter is so important and not just like going up and out in this transcendental, like oneness bliss. Like I had moments where I was like, why didn't I just become a nun? Like life would have been so much easier. But like, that's not my path. Like it's a beautiful, amazing dance for me to notice like, okay, well, like let's go into the body and like see how the ways that I'm dissociating are actually creating a huge disconnection between the words and the theory that I think that I believe that I am and the ways that I think that I would respond in certain situations that I might be in like around boundaries or whatever. But then when you're actually in that situation, like how does your body actually respond? And it's usually not what you think it is <laughs> or would be. <laughs> I love that. So give us an example. We had talked about the idea of guiding our listeners through a short little exercise. Show us, and I'm going to invite anyone who's listening to get into a comfortable seat and really eliminate as many distractions as you possibly can to do this little exercise with us. Yeah. All right. So... I'm just going to guide a very short exploration. So sometimes imagining different parts of your body is actually what might spark a connection there. Even if you don't know what certain parts look like, even if you don't know what certain parts feel like in your body, sometimes imagining them can spark something because the mind like even basketball players like they will actually sometimes do a million foul throws in their mind and that actually creates an amazing ability to do that in their body so wherever you are whether you're laying down or sitting i would invite you to just start by settling into your breath Noticing the natural, unconscious, uncontrolled movement of your diaphragm. And then slide down your body towards your pelvis. Let's just start by noticing the pelvis as a whole. The pelvis the skeletal structure of the pelvis, it looks like a basin. It's actually quite a beautiful structure. So if you've ever seen a basin that holds water, you can kind of imagine that that's what your pelvis looks like. If you want to bring your hand down into your pelvic region, sometimes it's fun to just kind of create a triangle, like putting either hand, like the palms and the fingers, on the crease where your lower abdomen meets your legs. And then I would invite you to bring your attention to your vulva. This is such a gorgeous part of the female body. It has all of these capacities for blossoming and for pleasure. And so here your clitoris a lot of people are not aware that we have these bulbs internally and when you get aroused, you maybe have noticed or maybe not. And I would invite this just as an awareness. When you become aroused in life, whether it's arousal through connection with a partner and sexual arousal, or sometimes this can happen just if you are aroused by what's happening in life because it's so delicious. These bulbs actually become engorged. 
And so on either side of your vulva, around the bony structure, this part becomes swollen. And just take a moment to notice the tone of your pelvic diaphragm, your pelvic floor, as we're kind of getting more intimate with this part of the body. Does it feel like it's bracing? Or relaxed? Or anywhere in between? And then see if you can imagine your womb. The space kind of right in the center of your pelvis and lower belly. This place that has the capacity to be both nurturing and the capacity to destroy in order for creation to be possible again and new. Notice if you have any particular shape that you imagine the world being. And it might not be the shape that everyone else tells you that it is or that anatomy says that it is. Is there a shape that you sense in your own world right now? And then go up and choose a side from the womb. We're going to follow the fallopian tube up and to the side to an ovary. Where all of your ovums, all of your eggs, I've already been there since the time of your birth. The energy of the ovum or the egg is perhaps the most quintessential feminine energy. It's round. It has a quality of just being. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Complete relinquishing of effort. And from here, I would invite you to take a moment to notice if there's anything else that you are curious about in this area of your body. And allow yourself to Explore that and drop into an open state of wonder without needing to know about it, without needing 
an answer to your curiosity. Just hold the curiosity and openness. And invite your body to reveal whatever it would like to reveal. As you're bringing your attention and letting your body know that you're curious, that you want to engage. And then bring your attention back to your pelvis, the skeletal structure. Come back around into your sacrum along the back. And then find your way back to coming into the room. Perhaps rubbing your hands together to get a little bit of warmth. Bringing your hands, your palms over your eyes. Opening your eyes into your palms. And then very slowly, with your ear, your vision on the palms. Moving them away from your face. Allowing light, colors, textures to come in. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Jody. After that kind of vis visualization, see, I'm even tongue tied after all of that beautiful <laughs> exercise. I think this is probably a really beautiful note to end our episode on. Thank you so much for coming, Jody. And if people are looking to work with you, how can they find you? So my website is surrenderinmotion.com. I'm also on Instagram through surrenderinmotion.com. And I'm on Facebook as Jody Thomas. I love that. Well, thank you again so much for sharing your wisdom and your expertise with us today, Jody, and we'll have to have you back on the show coming up. Thank you so much. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is where I am. I'm located oh, yes. in Portsmouth, on the hill in Portsmouth, Portsmouth which is Hampshire. right around the corner from you in Dover. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who is local to Maine and New Hampshire seacoast area, Jody mm -hmm. is in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. But if you are interested in the work that she does, feel free to reach out to her online. And if she can't support you in the area that you're in, I am sure that she can direct you to some really amazing resources for this beautiful work that she does. Absolutely. Thank you again so much for coming on, Jody. And we will do this again soon, my friend. Thank you, Adrian. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizarry of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one -on -one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation. Like and follow us at Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.